Good afternoon, everybody. This is Bronwyn from NetSuite Social Impact. And today you are joining the Oracle NetSuite Social Impact and Boys and Girls Club of Lawrence, Kansas collaborative webinar to talk about how you can accelerate your mission with NetSuite Social Impact. Uh, we're gonna give everybody a few more minutes to log in and then we'll get started right away. I do ask if you're logged in via phone to please keep your phone on mute so as to not disturb the other attendees. And if you have questions, please chat them in the Q&A box and I will receive them and uh, I will convey them to our, uh, to our guest today, James Lawrence from Kansas. Okay, I'm going to move forward. So uh, first, some legalese. We have our safe harbor statement, which states that anything that is presented here is the current product offering, which is subject to change in the future. I also wanted to make clear that uh, NetSuite is not a DGCA mandated software. We are simply providing you with information about technology used by some clubs across this movement, and this is not a uh, product that is specifically recommended by the National HQ. Our agenda for the day, so I'm going to go over a background on Oracle NetSuite Social Impact, and then we're going to have a question and answer session with the CFO of Boys and Girls Clubs of, of Lawrence, Kansas, James Lawrence, and then we're going to dive into a demonstration with Haley Campbell, and then we'll have a Q&A session after that to follow, and that will be it. Uh, I will be speaking for around 15 to 20 minutes with a 10-minute Q&A from James Lawrence, a 30-minute uh, demonstration from Haley, and then another 10-minute Q&A at the end. And here is your team today. I wanna go over some quick introductions uh, before we get started. So there's me on the left. My name is Bronwyn Schumacher. I manage partnerships for the social impact team working with large affiliate organizations like the Boys and Girls Club of America and many others as well. And then we have James Lawrence. He's also on the line with us today. He is a CFO of Lawrence, Kansas. He runs many clubs and he is a, one of the donation recipients of the Social Impact Program and a NetSuite user along with the rest of his finance team. And then we have Haley Campbell. She's on the right. She's a solutions consultant with us at uh, Oracle NetSuite Social Impact. And she will be demonstrating the software to you uh, for you today, specifically to Boys and Girls Club needs. So let's get started. Let's talk about what, what this social impact program really means. So Nestle's social impact mission is to accelerate the social impact of nonprofits and social enterprises globally, regardless of their ability to pay. And we do this through software donations, pro bono services, and capacity building programs as well. Over 1,300 nonprofit organizations and social enterprises to date use our software, and we're looking forward to this doubling, tripling in size as we uh, continue to move throughout the future. So let's talk a little bit about NetSuite, who we are, what we do, what our history is. NetSuite is the first cloud company founded in 1998. And uh, since then, we have uh, worked with over 40,000 organizations and subsidiaries globally. We have over 7,000 employees. And in 2016, we were acquired by Oracle, uh, which has heavily improved the resources and development that we can supply into product development and also help us help more nonprofits. So uh, what does NetSuite do on the whole? It's a holistic cloud ERP tool. This means that you can run your entire back office, your entire organization from a single tool. This means your expenses, your CRM, your fundraising, your grants management, your project management, all in the same place at the same time, all using a simple internet connection. So a history of NetSuite Social Impact. We have a strong history of, of giving back. In 
2007, we were founded as NetSuite.org. We were created by Evan Goldberg, the CTO of NetSuite, when he noticed that his Parent Teachers Association in Silicon Valley didn't have proper financial management tools to navigate memberships. And then he realized that PTA associations and nonprofits of all different types could benefit from NetSuite just as much as for-profit companies can. So from 2007 to 2018, we grew uh, exponentially in the past three years. In 2016, you can see we only had 430 organizations, and to now we service over 1,300 with over 20,000 pro bono hours donated. So caring for our clients does not just stop at our customer engagement model. Since our inception, NetSuite has used our technology as a lever for social change through providing software donations to nonprofits of all sizes. We also match NetSuite employees with these organizations to provide pro bono help. We also offer continual capacity building with those organizations to help them accelerate their mission. We're proud to partner with these incredible organizations building better communities, and we want to spread this impact further through causes that you care about as well. I think the most important part of this slide is to really understand the suite capacity component. We deliver a specific NetSuite employee to each one of our organizations that then gives us the ability to have an inside view of those who are receiving our help and our product donations. Here's an example of the different types of organizations that have received product donations from us. And the purpose of this is to understand that NetSuite works with really large organizations like Leukemia Lymphoma Society, as well as, well as really small ones too, like the Caring and Sharing Exchange uh, that does gift exchanges during Christmas time in, in Canada. So here is the NetSuite stairway for nonprofits. So the NetSuite donation program is designed to get small organizations through the first stage of our nonprofit stairway, the established stage. So we help you stabilize and maintain your financials so you can look ahead to dive deeper into, more mission, into your mission more effectively and be more cost efficient as well. So the, the first traditional step that we see is uh, within the established phase is replacing systems like QuickBooks and Excel and then to move further uh, by growing on NetSuite through the Elevate, Expand, Accelerate, and Dominate stage by maybe moving towards uh, project management and inventory management as, as well. So we provide a core donation that helps you hit the ground running and then also continues further uh, with more modules should you need them, uh, which you can talk about with your account manager, which you're given with the product donation. So we often hear that our clients and our nonprofits purchase NetSuite or use NetSuite because they want us to lead them through best practices that will help them run their organization. To enable the success of our clients as they implement a new ERP, we've built leading practices from our previous implementations right into the solution. For example, we take a target community like nonprofits and we build out leading practices based on previous implementations. So we bring the experience, the knowledge, and a proven methodology from more than 18 years and over 20,000 deployments into each one of our implementations. So with Sweet Success, we, uh, we deliver 250 roles, dashboards, and reports, and business intelligence tools that have been built specifically for nonprofits. And this, is, this approach is designed to help you as a nonprofit move up that stairway so you can focus on mission impact rather than having to invest time, energy, and resources into managing the, your overhead. The main goal here is to accelerate our customers' time to value, meaning that, you can, that there's faster user adoption and that we can provide the ability to go live on NetSuite within 100 days or less. So here is a slide that uh, highlights some of our highest achieving nonprofit success uh, examples. 
So here on the left, we have the Foundation Center. This is a large nonprofit which provides resources and data analytics for individuals and nonprofits looking to engage in philanthropy. They implemented NetSuite CRM and financial management tools and replaced a combination of many systems. Ashoka is a global nonprofit which provides workshops, fellowships, and grants to blossoming social entrepreneurs. They implemented our global platform of NetSuite to replace legacy on-premise hardware and Excel. Eva is one of the first micro-lending nonprofits based in San Francisco. Uh, they were a donation recipient themselves, and we've seen them start small and grow, ex grow exponentially because of NetSuite. They originally replaced Excel and QuickBooks with NetSuite Financials and our CRM, which is our core donation. Uh, the San Francisco SPCA is an animal care provider and another donation recipient. They save time on closing their books while gaining time on mission focus by replacing Blackbot and Excel with our inventory management, our financial management, uh, and, um, and general core financials for NetSuite. So now I'm going to uh, start a Q&A with our uh, collaborator here from um, the Boys and Girls Club of of Lawrence, Kansas. James, are you with us? I am here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Great. Okay. Thank you so much for joining. So I have a couple questions to start us off, and then if there are people that uh, attendees that have questions, please type them into the chat box, and I will field them. So to get started, I wanted to ask, uh, what systems were you running on before NetSuite, and what prompted you we to start evalu evaluating new ones? We were currently using a, uh, a small um, license of our uh, accounting firm that oversees our financials. So we had no control over um, the system setups outside of what they initially set up for us. And we were needing to, to know more about our financial systems and, and be able to tell a better story. So we, uh, after learning the, the process to get more access to that system, we started looking around and uh, stumbled upon the NetSuite Social Impact Program. Yeah. But, uh, so, what's the second part of that and how did you, Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well, how did you find out about the Social Impact Program? I, I actually had a, uh, a, a friend that had recently taken a job with NetSuite and we were at a gathering, and he was kind of telling me about uh, this program and pointed me to look it up on the website. So I did apply, and uh, voila. Cool. So, and when did you, um, so when you uh, first started using NetSuite, which was in January of 2018, is it right, when you, is when you um, started the implementation process? Um, Correct. What did you, what was your original, what was the original product that you were given in the donation? We were given uh, a very, uh, a good starting point um, with, with what we were needing to do. It, it came preset with a, uh, a login for, for our different positions, for operations, for our executive director, for our, our um, fundraising team that had preset built uh, reports um, and then the more that we tailored the system to our needs, it, the, the better story we were already telling pretty quickly. Yeah. So, um, and so since you've implemented the core financials, what other um, how are you looking to grow, like physically, like within the club, with, uh, within your clubs at NetSuite? And um, how are you looking to, are you looking at other par parts of NetSuite to help run your operations? Yeah, we are really, uh, once we are, have become more um, comfortable with the, the financial side, with the, my financial team, as well as our, our fundraising team, we, we want to really start using the system more for our operational team and use the, the procurement piece uh, that comes with um, NetSuite and the workflows. Uh, and then from there, we would like our marketing team to really 
start maximizing some of the um, marketing tools that NetSuite has to offer within the system as well. And the big piece of it that makes us most excited is that it's a centralized uh, program that we don't have to use all these different systems to communicate to, mm -hmm. to one system, then to report back out to everybody else for, for information that has already been collected, cleaned, and then inputted to give it to them. So having it streamlined from when they know everything up front, they're taking the notes within the system with the constituents or for the expenses that they're writing, it's all flowing and improving the communication with um, immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, please put them into the chat box. Uh, and we'll leave it open for a couple of minutes, a few minutes. And then, um, and if there's somebody that's on the line that doesn't have access to a computer, like Will, if you have a question, uh, you can unmute and ask it, go ahead. Uh, and then we'll move into the demo. Okay. Well, it doesn't sound like we have any other questions, so this is Haley speaking. Um, Brownman, is it okay if I go ahead and share my screen and get started on the demonstration? Yeah, go right ahead. All right, if you guys will give me just a moment. You should be seeing my screen any moment. It does take just a, just a second for it to share out for everyone, so I will give it a moment and let Brahman confirm that she can actually see my NetSuite instance before I get started. I can see it, Haley. Okay, perfect. Well, um, if anyone is having any issues, you know, just send something through the chat message, feel free to do that and we'll get started. Um, I am going to switch between a couple of screens, so I will give those just a second. I wanted to show uh, just a couple of slides to get you started and tell you a little bit more about and elaborate on what Brownman has already told you about what NetSuite does with Suite Success, et cetera, um, and a little bit about myself. So I have been working in the nonprofit sector for over 16 years now. Um, my background is in nonprofit business, it's what I went to school for. Uh, and what I have a degree in, actually. So I've done a little bit of everything. So I have done reporting and payroll and allocations, grant writing, which is something I still do on a volunteer basis, um, and been through an audit. My role at NetSuite as a solution consultant is to take organizations like yours through the evaluation process and the demonstrations, but the ultimate goal is to make sure that we are going to be good long-term partners for each other. So making sure that what you see in NetSuite is what is delivered to you and making sure that that's what you actually need, not just today, but also for your future growth. Now, before we get started, I thought I would tell you guys a little story about how I think about Sweet Success. So Bronwyn mentioned that what we did is we took our experiences with our many, many nonprofit customers and said, what are we doing over and over that's exactly the same? And how can we use that and consolidate that information and build best practices into NetSuite so that when we walk into an organization after a sales cycle, we can give them an idea of here's what works best for other organizations. Here's where you could start from, and you tell us what's different about your organization. So instead of starting from scratch in a blank screen, start from something that's pre-configured and then personalize it and change it the way you need it changed. So on the screen in front of you is someone named Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl is in a little band called the Foo Fighters, and a good friend here on the nonprofit team with me actually called me up and said, do you want to go see the Foo Fighters with me? And she and I have seen a lot of concerts together, and I was like, sure, I would love to. But that seems like a very strange request from her. So, you know, we get in the car, we go to the show, we have the tickets, we've been waiting a few weeks, and we walk in, and her face, when she saw the Foo Fighters, 
was when she realized that they are actually this band. So her expectation versus reality was completely different than what we were going to see. You'll actually notice in this photo that he, he actually has a broken foot. So the Foo Fighters play a four hour set, but her demonstration of what they did was this, which is in her car, everything is happy and perfect, it's a completely controlled environment. But when you go to the show, there are lasers, it is loud, it is long, and it is not at all what she expected. So the concept behind Sweet Success is that when you see a demonstration, you should never see the acoustic version where everything is controlled and perfect and exactly what you want, but walk in and get the rock show. And that's actually why many accountants choose NetSuite. So that is what we built Sweet Success based on, was that it is the best system for nonprofit accounting because we are driving your mission impact. And when we thought about how we were building it, we came at it from two perspectives, operations and strategy. How do we get the information into a system in a way that's as easy as possible, as accurate as possible, and how can we then use that information in real time? So I'm gonna take you through a couple of things. You'll notice some asterisks. We're not gonna go into details of all of this, but these are absolutely things that we can do in the future with your specific organizations. But I'll take you into an overview of NetSuite, how you get around, how you access it, how you get help, take you through an overview of the dashboards and some of the areas in NetSuite that are going to be the same for everyone. So that works throughout all the modules the same way. Talk a little bit about chart of accounts and journal entry and then a little bit of reporting. So we're gonna go ahead and switch into the system, which is on your screen in front of you now. Um, it is completely web-based, so that's something very important to know. What that means is that we were built from the ground up uh, as a web-based system. You can get to it anytime, anywhere. You can access it on a mobile device through our dedicated mobile app, and you are able to do this from home, on your commute, on the, on the go. So when you have things that can't be done in the office, or you wanna check in on something on a Sunday night before you leave the house, or you're like me and you have a toddler, and it's really nice to spend a couple hours with him before he goes to bed, but then you get a lot of work done after he goes to bed. You can do that very, very easily with NetSuite. It lets people work the way that they work best. This pre-built concept though that you see in front of you is all of the dashboards that you're going to see, all of the roles and security over here on the side, are things that we've gotten started for you. So think about when you are setting up security for something. You would have to think of every tiny little switch, right? What can people see? What can they do? Who can access it from every field? So we took our experience and we said, these are the segregation of duties that we see within nonprofit organizations. This is how we avoid audit exceptions. These are best practices. Let's get everybody started with a set of roles and they can assign users to those roles and tweak them, change them, or build them on as their own as they need to. Your users will probably only have one role, but I will show you a few different roles in our demonstration. Now that role doesn't just dictate security, it dictates my user experience. So what is important to me? As a CFO of an organization, I wanna run FASB reports on the fly. So I have those right up here at the top. There are certain things in my navigations and shortcuts that I do all the time. Put them right in front of me. Charity navigator statistics, different ratios and key performance indicators are things that I would love to keep track of in real time. Build, those are built right here into the system and they're also interactive. So instead of analyzing data after the fact, I am analyzing it as things are entered. If I have a question, I log in here, I click on this and I say, you know what, that number is not at all what I expected. You know, it's Tuesday night, I'm about to go home. Let's see what makes up this total. So if I go into and I wanted to see all of my expenses, I can see all of my expenses. If I wanna see just the one that's related to program services that makes up this total, I can do the exact same thing. So this will take me into a formal report that I can then drill into. You can also, again, drill directly into source transactions if you have the appropriate rights. So I was on a dashboard, I was about to leave for the day, I noticed a number that I didn't expect now that data entry has been done all day, and I was able to click on it, see how it was calculated, potentially look at a trend graph over time if I have that data available to me, and get all the way to the source transaction. So answering questions, giving people the ability to be proactive and make changes and pivot as they need to immediately 
without having to analyze these things after the fact when it's too late to make a big change. So there's a couple of other things I want to show you here. So now that we've done the drill down, I wanted to show you a few things on this vendor bill that are specific to the entire system. So are going to be common throughout. The first one uh, is to note that you can have multiple versions of the same record. So if you don't like the way a screen looks, you want to rearrange these fields, you'd like to add your own custom field related to something that you track, you can absolutely do that. If you come down here to the bottom, though, we also have a communication tab. If there are any email messages, related records, attachments, those are all available here. So this particular vendor bill actually came from a purchase order. If I wanted to see the details of that purchase order, I could just open it up directly from here. I don't have to go through extra steps. Now that I'm on the purchase order, if I come to its communication tab, I've got email messages associated with this. So I can see where I have requests to be approved. I can see that history. If I go to the files tab, I can also see the file attachments that are associated with this particular transaction. Now this communication tab, tracking emails, files, and attachments are on all transactions and all records. So think about how much paper we have floating around. If we can consolidate that paper and put it in an electronic process, now it's always someplace that I can access. I don't have to dig around for it. Another important thing to note here, speaking of digging around for information, is that I didn't have to move around in the system to answer my questions. So for example, I worked in a system previously where if I wanted to do exactly what we just did, I would be on my dashboard and I would say, all right, well now I need to know the details behind it. And I would have to close the dashboard, go into the report module, and run this income statement. Then I don't have access to drill into the income statement, so I'd have to run a detailed report. Once I run that detailed report, which in NetSuite I could just click on, I would be able to see the details behind that number. In my other system, I would then have to get a sticky note, write this down, close out of this report, go into the AP module, open the vendor, go to the transaction history, and find that bill to get to the screen that we just opened here. Once I did that, I would then have to try to find the PO number, close the vendor bill, and open the PO number. NetSuite, as you just saw, has one, all of that linked together, and two, all of it can be open in multiple tabs at the same time. So when you think about data entry or reconciliation or analysis, that's very powerful. I can open all the different areas of NetSuite at the same time, drag and drop these screens around, do split screen, do dual monitors, and make the lives of the users much, much easier. So it's easy for them to get into. It's easy for them to navigate, as you saw, because everything's interactive and it's a web browser. I've got favorites. I have recently used records. Um, I even have, right up here at the very top, a global search bar that, just like my drill down, is not limited to a single module. I can put in the information that I have, and it will search across the entire NetSuite database for me based on my security rights. So that concept of answering questions that we've seen throughout, letting the system be proactive, getting information in real time is very, very powerful and very important. A couple of other common things that we saw here were the communication tab with messages and file attachments. And the last thing I'd like to show you here is the system information tab. Now again, remember, you can move these forms. You don't have to show everybody this information. So if it's too much, um, it's very easy to simplify. But system notes, which are reportable, are going to have every transaction's history and every record's history. When was it entered? Who entered it? What were the old values and new values? And what workflow has this gone through? Because NetSuite has a completely front-end configurable workflow tool. That means that you can send your transactions and records through approval or through informational workflows to do anything that you want it to do. Now, implementation-wise, we will get you started with the basics. We have basic workflows pre-built that you can use, and then you can configure them how you guys see fit. That is typically something that we suggest people start out basic and then add on to, but it is based on your individual organization's needs. The other thing you saw here is that we do have a purchasing system and an expense report system, so we can track all of that information as well. And one last thing to mention, now that we've talked about navigation, drill down, attachments, communication, system information, and workflow, is to mention help and documentation. So you will notice 
that every field has this little question mark. That's field level help, which your organization can go in and add and edit as they need to. And we also have help up here at the very top right on every screen that will take you into our user documentation of your official user documentation. And you'll notice it filtered for me. So it took me to the area I was working in, which is very, very helpful. We have our sweet answers, and you can also go into things like seeing a short video, getting to our training team, um, contacting customer support. So all of that is available to your users so that, again, I need to get my job done, I need to get it done now. Okay, so let's do just a quick recap of what we've done. Access and security, navigation help, the dashboard, so consolidating your information, getting it in real time with the drill down attachments and workflow. Uh, the next thing I want to show you just very quickly, I know we want to be respectful of our time here together, uh, is a little bit about the chart of accounts and a couple of things you can do with reports. And then we will turn it back over for a Q&A section. Um, as I mentioned, I am showing you very high level in just a few minutes, but we are happy to get together, talk more about your individual organizations, what you're looking for, you know, what you like about your current systems, what you're doing manually, what you wish you could improve, what your future plans are, and show you something that's more specific to you, going through things like project management, the full procure to pay process, receivables and CRM and fixed assets. Before we switch back to the chart of accounts, I do want to mention just one thing here around CRM. NetSuite does have a native CRM system. So it is built into the NetSuite system. Um, that is how I get things like my, my individual customers, et cetera. You can use your CRM system. You can also use our CRM system. And we have m many, many people that use them together. So when you think about that, that means that if I have a point-specific CRM that I really like, uh, but I also have a secondary CRM that does something very specific, like event management or peer-to-peer -peer fundraising that I like as well, now I have two CRMs. That means that I now have information about one person in two places, and that makes it hard for me to analyze. NetSuite CRM will allow you to put it all in one place by integrating or importing from those two so you have a centralized location to do analysis. And that is something we can absolutely talk about further. But just to give you a quick overview of the chart of accounts, we'll go back to this purchase order that we have previously opened. So when I'm doing my coding, there's a couple of things to consider. One is how much information can people give me on the fly? So when whoever's entering information, Let's make it default in as much as we can for them. So default in my category uh, and automatically pick the account code. And then down here as we go, it's also going to allow you to create any other additional fields that you want. So let's make a copy of this and I will make some edits on it. That way you can see this in action. Now, your chart of account structure does not have to be what I have here. So remember, that this is fully configurable, but we got you started with things like your department, your functional expense for those SASB reports, restriction level, which can be your traditional three levels that roll up into the new two level of with and without donor restriction, uh, funds and programs, project management, grant as well. And if we click on these, we also have hierarchy within them. So you would be able to roll up your different programs, and anything else in your chart of accounts at any level that you want within the reporting tool. Now, we also give you the ability to use something called a sweet key. So if I am entering information, I could use one of these little shortcuts that's going to fill in all of those extra columns for me. I work with many, many customers that their users only work in this one field, and all of these other fields are either hidden or grayed out so that they don't have to worry about valid combinations. They don't have to worry about what people have security access to. They lock it down to this one area, they pick the valid combination, and it fills out for them. You'll also notice that regardless of how many sections I have here, only a few have the little red star saying they're required. Make data entry easy for people, because if you force them to put in values, they're gonna put something in. If they put something in just because they had to, it might not be right. It is easier for me to go through on approval, et cetera, and add the appropriate functional expense, for example, than it is for me to go back and try to figure out what people entered incorrectly. So make data entry as easy and simple for people as possible. And if you want to hide all of these extra fields, you absolutely can. You can code them appropriately as they go through the workflow. 
Now you've seen a couple of things in reports, but if we switch over into that reporting module, I want to show you a couple of dashboards, but from the configurable reports, if we expand this time frame, just know that you can run reports for any time frame that you want. Crossing fiscal years is very important, especially for things like grant funding. These are also interactive and drillable. You can run them at any level of detail, expand them out. You can send these things out into Excel or any other system that you want, schedule them and email them right here on the fly. And if you wanted to customize and configure, like adding things like budget columns, adding filters, slicing and dicing the data, you can do that right here as well. Now, to wrap up today, I want to switch into a different role for you. I want to take you into a grant administrator role and take you through some of these concepts quickly that we've already gone through. So remember, we were logged in as a CFO, and as a CFO, I had my FASB reports, and I had big picture information. But now, as I log in as my grant administrator, and again, forgive my numbers, when you implement your numbers will be much nicer than mine, but this is going to take my information and target it to who I am. It's going to say something like my grant opportunities. How many do I have open? How many are new? What's our win rate? What's our pipeline? Um, how much do we have in receivables and unbilled items? And then even taking it down to a combination. So remember, we just looked at the chart of accounts. We took a look at an income statement, but I'm taking the exact same concept and I'm saying for this grant, Grant 02, for this specific program, what are my revenues, expenses, and net assets? Grant 02 also funds another program. Same thing, give me the revenue, expenses, and net assets. So being able to see the uh, milestones, the reminders, these can all come over email, they can come to your mobile device, and they're also here on your dashboard. So that's a quick overview. Um, I wanted to, like I said, just give you an idea of the value points of NetSuite, which really are that it's very simple to access, and we gave you a starting point for it. So we made it easy for people to navigate around. We made it easy for people to answer their questions about both NetSuite and the data within their individual data set. So reports, opening things at the same time, and putting everything in one place. So putting in my attachments, my email messages, automatically tracking approvals and workflows. And all of that is just standard out-of-the-box functionality. So that all feeds in, again, to these roles, these specific areas that are going to drive what I see, what I have access to, and make sure that we are in full compliance. Okay. So I do want to take a breath there and turn it back over to see if you guys have any additional questions for us. You're, feel free to send it through the chat, and you can also um, send that through, uh, take yourselves off mute, because I don't think we have so many people in here that that would cause a problem, so please feel free to do that. This is Will Penny. I have a couple of questions for you, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and they're all pretty brief. So on the CRM, if a recent pledge in the CRM module, does that book receivable in the general ledger? Does it integrate like that? It does integrate like that, yes. Okay. And then an add-on question that can you limit that capability so RD isn't just entering very aggressively or uh, very aspirationally pledges? <laughs> you absolutely can. You absolutely can. So you could put those in as essentially what originally was called a sales order. That sales order will be reportable but does not actually post to a receivable. And then the pledge payments as you invoice off of it. So let's say that it's a, a pledge for $1,200, $100 a month. When they create those invoices, then it would create the receivable one month at a time on a pre-generated schedule so that you would see a receivable of $100 a month as opposed to seeing $1,200 in total. But you can still see that $1,200 from the sales order perspective. It, doesn't, it just doesn't post to the general ledger that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, not really, but that's okay. It, it sounds, sounds good so far. Um, another, <laughs> thank you. Another question for you on the attachments. Is there any limit to the storage, the amount of attachments we can uh, append? 
Um, I can tell you that there is an official contractual limit to the size of your data set, uh, but no one ever reaches it. So I have not seen anyone ever have a problem with it before. Even customers, long-time customers, I can only imagine after seven or eight years, it's a huge accumulation of attachments. It can be. It can be. Bronwyn works with more of our customers that have been here long term, so she can actually get some of our specific terminology around that. Um, but we can absolutely get the details on that. Okay. Just a couple more quick questions. I apologize. Uh, yeah. No, upload, take your time. Uploading the uh, geo mapping and uploading the payroll, I assume that's a no-brainer? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely, and that is something that we do suggest as an import versus an integration because you're only going to do it periodically. It's no reason to do that in real time. Very simple, and you right. save that mapping, just do it over and over. And, okay, yeah, and um, I'm more curious to see how many buttons are involved in that process. I, we have a software, much like you described, could be called <coughs> Financial Edge, um, which is very arduous <laughs> to upload in. So I'm hoping, I, I'm sure NetSuite is easier. So uh, last question I have around is around implementation. What are your thoughts about using a third-party company? Here in Austin, we have a company called Nine Gauge that I think is very mm -hmm. uh, familiar with NetSuite. What do you think about using them as a uh, implementer as opposed to NetSuite itself? Yeah, yeah, no, that's an excellent question. Um, I'll address both. The import, yes, it is simple, and um, we can absolutely show that to you. Uh, I, I may have also worked on the product that you mentioned before, so I understand those limitations. Um, from the implementation standpoint, we do have our own implementation team here at NetSuite, but we do also have a partner network. So we work with partners all the time. If you want someone local, if you know someone or know someone that used them previously, we're absolutely on board with that. So it, it's, sometimes it's based on a different user experience. Again, you want someone on site with you all the time and you got a local office, that's a great uh, benefit for you. Um, if you have people that do other things with you and you want their team to help with the implementation, like if you have a relationship with your auditor and they have an individual implementation arm, or you have someone you wanted to work with for change management, they're going to be more involved in the process, we're absolutely on board with that too. So you can use our team, you can use their team, and we also work in combination quite a bit as well. Okay, thank you for all your answers. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Anyone so, else have I anything have... that they'd like to discuss? Yes, I have, this is Bronwyn, I have some people chiming in via chat. Um, I have been asked if you can create tax letters for donors from payments received in NetSuite. Task letters? Tax, T-A-X. Like tax, tax exemptions? Yes. Oh, thank you. Mail merges. Um, kind of stuff. Yeah. You can. Our CRM system does absolutely have the ability to create those mail merges and templates. That is an option. Great. And then is there a limit to a number of users that can have access? Um, so um, I'm not sure if this question is access to, is there a more specific access that uh, they're speaking to? I can find that out. Um, so I can speak to the donation program, which uh, to date the users, you now have three free users, um, and then you have a learning portal, which is also free for the donation. And then um, beyond that, uh, if you need more from NetSuite, you purchase users at a discount. Um, so there is an unlimited number of users that you can have. It's just according to... Um, it's just according to what your needs are as an organization. And so from the audience is there, are there any questions that you'd like to ask James who we have on the line today? I was going to answer the tax letter question. I don't know if this was what they were asking, but we, we 
we uh, uh, manipulated the, the receipt template for cash receipts to have our donor, you know, our letter that we provide to our donors to say keep for their records for the year. And that's, um, that works really good because you can actually make it to where when you're receiving that payment, it could send that uh, receipt electronically as soon as you hit submit. So that's, that may be what they're asking for and that's been very helpful for us. Thanks, uh, James, that was really helpful. Uh, so we can leave the line open for any more questions. I don't know, Will, if you're still on the line, if there's anything else, yeah, I, it's open. Sure, sure. I, I, should, I have a question for James, actually. James, can you talk about training your staff and not just on the onset, but certainly talk about that. It sounds like NetSuite is, from my impression, NetSuite is very intuitive. So I'm mm -hmm. sure your staff managed to click around and learn on their own. But talk about what did you offer them for training? And then also, if you can, ongoing support. Besides clicking on a help button, what is their experience when they're stuck and they call Oracle for help? We, we uh, being this is our first year being in the system, we, we have it rolled out to everyone. To our administrative team, we have, uh, I did provide the videos that were provided to me through, um, with our, our, our gift or, or whatever, your, our packet that was, we were awarded uh, and had them watch the videos with me. I'd ask questions or have them ask me questions and I'd try to help get them the answers. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, our plan is to continue to learn the system because I'm sure you're familiar with program people that are out always busy and always managing fires that we want to get to know the system pretty well before we start really bringing in our, our program staff to use it as a, uh, at, the, at the full capacity that we're looking for. Um, as far as the getting stuck, um, we haven't really had much of that. As far as I, I've run into, we, you know, we would contact the, the, the team that we had to help us for the implementation and they were really helpful and really the sweet answers and the, um, the help that is provided within the NetSuite program is very, very helpful. Okay, thank you. So if there are any questions, any other questions, please put them in the chat or if you're online, you can, or if you're on the phone, you can ask them. I'll give it another minute or so. Um, we have some time here, so uh, any questions are welcome. And we have a lot of resources with us on the line, so please use them. Um, and if not, I'll move on also to next steps. So, um, our, the first line of communication here, if you want to get in touch with NetSuite, um, Will, and I've, I remember you from the conference, so I'm, I'm, I know that you're already in contact with NetSuite, but anybody else on the line, go to netsuite.com slash social impact, and uh, you can apply online for our donation program and see if you're eligible and go through a, uh, a qualification call to see what would work best for your organization. Um, and if you also have any explicit questions about NetSuite functionality, ask them here at a later date, email socialimpact.netsuite.com, and we can get you set up on a, a tailored demonstration specifically for your club. And also explore the resources page. Um, we have YouTube channels with demonstrations, as well as some data sheets. So uh, please use those to your best ability. Um, and also, you can reach out to my email, bschumacher at, um, at nextweek.com, and uh, if you have any uh, specific questions today. But I'll leave this chat open for a while, so just, you know, er everybody just chime in, and thanks, everybody, for joining. Okay, I appreciate you. Take care.
Take care. Thanks. Thank you.